Welcome to Figure Feedback. My name is Jeremy. And did you know that Prusa had developed a way for you to slice and send 3D files from your web browser or from your mobile phone to your printer remotely? Well, if you have a Prusa printer already, then you've probably already been using this. But the reason why I'm making this video is because this functionality called Easy Print is now available to third party printers, meaning that you no longer need to have a Prusa printer in order to pull this off. It is something that you can do on your computer from the web browser, or you can download the Prusa app. You can make an account and you can start slicing and sending your files from there, from your phone. So let's take a look at it. I'm going to do a little experiment to see how how well it works. Now, first of all, if you want to access this, you can go to printables.com, which is Prusa's website for finding all kinds of 3D files to slice and print. And you can go right up here to Easy Print. So go ahead and give that a click. And then you're brought to this web based slicing interface. Now, you may see here that I have this circular build plate and up here, the printer that I have ready is the Fulson T1. And that's because you can add all sorts of different printers to this in order to send files over there. So let's see what kind of printers that they have. There's Prusa, of course, but we also have profiles for Creality printers, any Cubic, Elegoo, Voron, even Bamboo Lab, uh, Flash Forward, Solval, Anchor, Cheaty, Artillery, and the list goes on and on for a few more roles. Now, since I did bring up Bamboo Lab, I have to say that because of Bamboo Lab security features, you cannot send a file remotely from this to a Bamboo Lab printer and start printing. But what you can do is slice a file and export that file onto like a USB stick and then take that USB stick over to your printer and then you can print that way. But when I first started this, the first thing that I did was I saw that Flash Forge was available and they have these printer profiles from everything from the AD5X to the Guider 3 Ultra, the 5M series, all the way down to the Adventurer 3 series printer. So the first thing that I tried to do was get this up and running. And to do this, I went here and then I clicked on the edit button. And I went to enable direct access over LAN. And when you do that, you have to choose the connection interface. And here are the choices that they have. Prusa Link, OctoPrint, Clipper, Creality Print, and Elegoo Link. Now, notice for Flash Forge, their protocol is not in here. And that is something that is present in, say, Orca Slicer. You need to use that Flash Forge communication protocol in order to connect your Flash Forge printer to Orca Slicer in order for you to send your files over to it. But because Prusa doesn't have that in here, it's not working, at least not for me. I've tried my IP address under each of these options and it does not connect. So I'm guessing maybe Flash Forge will have to get in touch with Prusa and then do whatever that they need to do in order to get the Flash Forge network connection type implemented into here so that this will work. It hasn't worked for me, but if I'm wrong and you tried this and it worked for you please let us all know in the comments and then i can try it again and maybe it'll work but since the flash force didn't work i decided to go with the fulson t1 pro because it's more open than flash forge and i did the exact same thing that i would do with the flash forge printer i can enable direct access to the printer over LAN. and by the way i did also download the uh, extension the chrome extension for this in order to enable direct access over LAN. And since uh, this is a Clipper machine, I can use the Clipper uh, Moonraker network connection type and type in the IP address for the printer. And then it says that it is ready. But you also need to be warned that all of these printers, these third party printers, they're using experimental print profiles and may not work as expected. So please use with caution. So that's something that you should know. But once you're done, you get this very kind of like basic slicing interface here. And then you see like here over to the side, you can add models 
that you might want to choose. And this is all being pulled directly from printable. So let's say I wanted to print uh, something simple like these minimal line work bookmarks. I can just give that a click. I've got two different files to choose from. I'm going to choose the regular STL file and I'm just going to load it right here onto the print bed. And then when it comes to using different settings, um, it's not as robust as Orca Slicer or Prusa Slicer or just about any other kind of slicer. You know, it's very basic just to kind of get you going. So what you can do is go up to material here and then you can choose what kind of materials that you're going to be using and the color of the filament that you're going to be using. So for me, I am going to change this orange to red. And then for the material, I'm using some uh, regular PLA. This is what's available for the uh, for the T1 Pro because you can't use like abrasive materials with it. So just regular PLA. And I'm using JO PLA, but it's not on the list. But you can see the variety of other printer uh, filament profiles rather that are available. So since JL is not on this list, I'm just going to use a generic PLA profile, just like that. And from here, you can also go over to supports. If you need supports, you can choose uh, supports that are everywhere, snug or organic, or you can do build plate only supports that are snug or organic. And then you can also have options for brims like here. You can just have the brim sort of like in the corners here for automatic, or you can do the brims that go around the entire model. So if you're familiar with slicing 3D prints, then you already sort of know what this is all about here. And then you can go up to the settings here and you can choose the infill and the infill percentage. So if I just keep it here at 15%, we can see the types of infill patterns that they have. We have the fastest infills and these are the basic patterns here. We have the durable infills that print slower. And then we have the overlapping infills here. They even have some suggested infills for transparent or flexible models. And then super fast infill is for lightning. For these bookmarks, I want them to, you know, have a little bit of oomph to them. So I'm just going to choose gyroid here. I'm just going to keep it at 15%. We also got some print profiles. We can do all the way down to 0.12 millimeters for fine detail. We have 0.16 for optimal, standard, extra draft, and regular draft. I'm just going to pick optimal here at 0.16 millimeters. And then you can also change shell thicknesses here as well. So you can't do a whole lot of stuff, but you can do just enough to, you know, just get you started, like I said earlier. And then over here on the left side, you can do a print preview. I don't know why it says that unsupported material selected and it says red mark materials are not supported. So choose another material. I'm like, I just chose generic PLA. OK, but um, I guess I have to choose PLA high speed instead. I mean, it is a fast printer, so OK. You also have this print preview button right here that you can click. It's going to do some processing. And then with this bar on the side, you can just move it up and down and you'll see like the, the process of the layers building. Since these are like really simple bookmarks, it's not a whole lot to it. But, you know, this bar, it's still there, you know, very familiar with that particular uh, thing here. Let's just go back over here. We have an arrange button right here it says that the objects are already arranged so we don't need to do that underneath here you can select models on the bed so you can select each one if you want and then down here is just for adding models all right so once all that's done you know i'm just going to pick one of these to print i'm not going to print i'm not going to use all of these so let's just say i want to use let's just stick to the one in the middle so let's delete this one let's delete this one and we'll just have this bookmark here in the middle. And here's my new estimate, 23 minutes and six seconds, 3.15 grams of filament, PLA high speed. I can upload this to the printer or I can just start the print. Now, what I'm gonna do is upload it to the printer because I like to level the bed before I start printing everything. And it doesn't look like this is gonna give me the option to level the bed before printing. So I'm just gonna hit upload to printer is sending it to the printer. It says it's been uploaded. So I'm going to head down to the T1 and I'm going to start this print. And if it doesn't destroy it, we'll see what the end result is. 
So let me show you the bookmark that was printed on the T1 Pro. Here it is right here. It did a pretty good job. I was slightly concerned that uh, because the profile was for the T1 and I'm using a T1 Pro that maybe things would be um, not so great, but there were no issues at all. There's a little bit of stringing in between some of these uh, patterns here, but that's really no big deal. It was a pretty quick print, around 20-ish minutes or so, and hey, it looks good. So I really like that Prusa has done this, and the way that I think about it is, it's sort of like a more accessible version of what Bamboo Lab has done with Maker World. Because even though, granted on Maker World, you can grab a 3D file from there and you can import it into whatever slicer you want and you can print on whatever printer that you want. But when it comes to the mobile side of things, the Bamboo Handy app that is integrated into Maker World, that only communicates with Bamboo Lab printers. But with this easy print, method, you can take files from printables and use it on a wide variety of printers. I also think this helps to make 3D printing more accessible, especially if you are a beginner. But even if you are pretty seasoned at this, there can be situations where someone comes around and they're like, hey, 3D print me something. You know, that's what my dad did. He's like, hey, just print something, you know, he didn't really care what it was. He just wanted to see the printer in action. So instead of having to go to the computer, looking for a file, saving it and opening it up in the slicer and just doing that back and forth, just being able to pull out the phone, going to the easy uh, print and just pulling up a random file on printables, throwing it into the cloud slicer and just doing some really basic changes as far as infill and stuff goes. If you even want to do that and just sending it wirelessly to your Creality printer, your Elegoo printer, your Fulsun printer, your Boron, your whatever that you might have that's on that list that works, that is really convenient. So I'm glad that Prucha has just sort of made this a lot more accessible to other printer brands besides just the ones that they make. Now, will I be using EasyPrint all that much? Uh, probably not, because to me, it's really more situational and I don't have a problem just sitting at my computer, going to Orca Slicer and just doing everything that I need to do from there. So, hey, it's it's not something that I will just completely change how I do things just so I can use this. But I can totally see a use for this and it helps to endear people more to the printables ecosystem, because now instead of just using printables to find files and just maybe opening it up in Orca Slicer and doing your thing, you can now use printables as a way to quickly fire off some 3D prints on your printer when you don't have to worry too much about the slicer settings in order to get the job started and to get it done. And even with experimental profile for this T1 Pro, it still came out just as good as if I were using a standard regular profile. So that is going to do it for now. Let me know down in the comments if you have tried using Easy Print from Prusa or if you want to give it a go and check it out for yourself. So if you found this content useful at all, do me a favor and subscribe to the channel. Leave a like, leave a comment. Every little bit helps. And until next time, take care of yourselves. And I'll speak to you soon.